All right, in this video, we're going to uh, talk you through how to make a s'more. Actually, we're going to talk you through how to build a working drawing for a s'more. Uh, what you see here in front of you on the screen now, go ahead and zoom back out so you can see a little bit better, is a working drawing. A uh, working drawing consists of uh, multi-view drawings of parts that are then used together to create an assembly. So that in this working drawing, you have an exploded view drawing, and you also have the uh, multi-view drawings of the parts that comprise uh, that full assembly. So we're going to go ahead and on shape and start working on creating those parts. Then we'll show you how to make an assembly, and then finally how to do a exploded view drawing and a working drawing for a layout. OK, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and minimize uh, the screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up um, in on shape uh, a new document so I can walk you through this step by step. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select document and I'll go ahead and just call this thing s'more. Should call it s'more drawing. OK, hit OK. And now I'm ready to start uh, modeling. So what I'm going to have to do uh, once this opens up is I'm going to want to minimize uh, my screens here so I can see uh, different parts of this assembly and start working on different parts of this assembly. So if I go ahead and zoom in on this, um, we can go ahead and start with this first part. This is our graham cracker. Um, we'll go right ahead over here and on shape. And with this setup, I can start a sketch. And I can go right away and put this onto the front work plane change to my front view, grab my uh, rectangle tool, and I'm just going to sketch in a quick rectangle. Um, and oh, one other thing that we do need to take note of as I start uh, this process is this drawing is actually all in metric. And you see the note here, it says note metric drawing all parts dimension in millimeters. So what that says right off the top is when I get started, all of these uh, dimensions are millimeters. And what I need to do is before I start drawing here, I need to actually go ahead and change my workspace units. So next to the word on shape, you click on those three little bars, hit workspace units, and you can go right in and change this to millimeters. Hit the green check, and now you're ready to start drawing in millimeters. So I'll jump back into that sketch where I first was, and now I can just start dimensioning. I'll go ahead and dimension this. This is saying it's 43 uh, millimeters, so I want this to be 64. All right, hit enter. And then I'm going to go over here and drop this dimension. This is going to be 57 and hit enter. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to center this thing on this origin. And I want to use some constraints to do it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, a line. And then I want this to become a construction line. I want this so that and then uh, use this to actually constrain to the center markings uh, of the sketch. So to do this, I'm going to find the uh, little midpoint or on the top line and draw down across the part. And then I'm going to do this again, line tool, uh, construction line, and then draw from one side to the other. And the next thing I'm going to do is start working with my constraints. So I'm going to pull down my constraints and I'm going to use this coincident constraint to then say I want this line to not leave this line. And it moves over. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to tell this line not to leave this line of the sketch, and it now centers itself on the origin. So that's great. Now I know that <clears throat> if I ever needed to go back and make edits, I can do that. This will also make it easier to assemble once we needed to uh, jump into the assembly. Okay, now I'm ready to go ahead and start extruding. I uh, have the rough shape of this more set up, so I'm going to grab my extrude tool, grab the inside of that extruded area, and then take a look and see that this is a 5 millimeter extrusion. So we'll go ahead and set this up as a five millimeter extrusion. So there it is, the rough outline of the s'more, or I'm sorry, rough outline of the graham cracker. So we're ready to go ahead and start uh, setting up our next sketch plane, because now what I want to do is start setting up the holes, because graham crackers have little teeny tiny holes in them that actually have a little curved fillet around each one. So we'll go ahead and start positioning that, and then we'll use the array tool uh, to actually help uh, position them. So. What I do is got my sketch made. I'm going to go ahead and grab my circle tool and I'll go ahead and just rough in a quick circle, grab my dimension, put this up here and set that dimension up because it says all whole fillets are radius of one. And then what I'm looking at over here is in this detail view drawing. A detail drawing is where you can see a, a smaller section of a, a drawing has been blown up in size. You can see the scale is four to one. 
So this little section right here is what I'm looking at here, only much larger uh, scale. So I see that this hole right here is uh, one, and that's going to be for all the holes. So that's why I have a one millimeter hole. Now what I can do is start positioning it. You can see that these positions are eight by eight, and it says hole pattern, eight by eight offset. So I can then make that assumption that uh, from the note, I can place every single one of these at an eight by eight pattern. So let's see if I can get this dimension to jump into position for me. All right, oh, not 83, just eight, no, there we go. There, that's in, and then we'll keep going. and place that dimension there we go so now that is in there and i can finish that uh sketch and actually go ahead and extrude this hole so I'll go ahead and extrude that hole and it wants to join right away i want to remove or take away material and the thickness i'm going to then cut this thing is five all right so now i have a hole so the next thing i want to do is i want to go ahead and put a small fillet around the top of the hole so with that set up, I'm going to go ahead and put in that uh, fillet radius, because this is all in radius of one, and then select the top of that circle. It makes that nice curve uh, that you would see at the top of that graham cracker. Okay, now we're ready to start the pattern. And <clears throat> with a pattern, we're going to use this linear pattern tool. And the first thing it's asking for is the entities to pattern. Now, what I found is um, what it seems like it likes better is if I grab these patterns over here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the extrude two and the fillet as the entities to pattern. And before I can select those, I need to pull this down and actually I want to pattern a feature. So it says feature pattern. Then I should be able to come over. There we go. I can start selecting extrusion two and actually highlights in my drawing here and also fillet one. So they're the two things that I want to uh, actually pattern. So those two features together. Now I want to know the direction. So what's the direction that I'm going to actually run this thing in? Well, I'm going to click the edge that it will run in a linear manner with. So it's going to then start making a pattern. There's two. And I need one, two, three, four of these across the top. So I'm going to then highlight this and make this four. And it's actually trying to make these things, but it can't because it runs off the page. So I need to go back and I need to start talking about, well, how, what is the distance? Right now this distance is at 25 millimeters. Well, obviously that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell this thing that on the top of the screen here, from this one to this one, it's gonna be 16, okay? Click in another cell and you can see that update in my drawing. So with that set in position, what I can do now is I can set up an additional uh, array where it comes down and sets up the second row. So I can say in a second direction, I'm going to do the same uh, pattern, okay? Uh, and that same pattern is going to then have a distance of 16. And the distance is then going to be 2, because it's going to be one row and two rows. And then the direction <clears throat> is going to be linear in this way. So you can see there, there are my two pattern uh, sets of circles. All right, so there's my first linear pattern. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is set up my uh, next batch of holes here. So I'll go ahead and grab a sketch, drop it on the face, and then I'm going to set up my circle. And the circle is going to be roughly in this area. Again, go right ahead and dimension. So make that one, and then we're going to set up the uh, positioning dimensions. So we'll go from here to here. Let's do this again. Didn't seem to take that the way it should have. So we'll grab the center, grab this edge. Yep, come back up. And that's going to be 16. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go from this edge to the center, come back out this way. And that's going to be 16 also. All right. Now we're ready to do the exact same thing we just did, where we go ahead and we extrude and then set up a fillet. So we'll do this. Tell it to remove, give it the depth of five. So it's going in the right direction. And then I'm going to go and now I'll grab that fillet tool again. I'll set up a radius of one. And then I want to find that top section, set up that fillet and hit my green check. All right, good. So now I'm ready to array this next batch. I'll grab the array tool and I'm going to then tell it right away. You want feature pattern 
So then I can go ahead and start selecting these features. And I'll show you in this point, I can select from the model and grab the hole, and I'm going to grab the fillet. So I have those two features together. If you don't grab the hole with the fillet, sometimes it doesn't, it's not going to work. So then we want to do distance. <clears throat> so from this hole to this hole, <clears throat> that is going to be 16 again, because it's eight by eight there. And then the instances, we're going to do three of those. And then direction, we're going to be running in that direction. So there we go. That pattern pops up for me. And that's what I want. Green check. And the second array is finished. I'm going to take this array and put it down here. So we're going to go right ahead and we're going to grab the mirror tool. So grab the mirror tool. And again, part mirror. I'm going to mirror a feature. And I'm going to select my features from over here again. Um, so I mouse over these features. I'm going to say that's linear pattern one. I want linear pattern two. And I can see I'm highlighting. I also need to have extrusion three, fillet two, and I need to have this extrusion uh, two and fillet number one. Then I have everything highlighted. Now it wants to know, well, what's the plane that's gonna be the mirror plane? Because I set this all up and it's set all my origins, I can then grab mirror plane and then I can select the plane that is actually the center plane between these. So I'm gonna move this so you can kind of see what I'm selecting here the easiest way. So if I select this plane, that's cutting this part in half. So it's going to mirror to the other side of that part. There's the array at the bottom and the green check. And now all the holes are finished up. Now we're going to grab our sketch tool, drop it on the face, turn and take a look at it again. And now we're going to start working on these little slot features here. So to do that, I'm also going to slide over here so I can see uh, this uh, detailed drawing and see where they're going to go and how big they are and everything else. So let's start taking a look at that. Okay, so to start a slot, you have to understand what a slot is. A slot's going to be two circles with lines uh, going back and forth across them. And um, what I'll do is first I want to set up our center line across this part. So what I'll do is grab my line tool, again, grab a construction line, and I'm going to put a construction line across here so I know that I'm working on that line. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab a circle, and on that line I'm just going to draw a circle. And again, I'll draw a second circle. Go ahead and dimension them right away. And these are going to be one inch. I'm sorry, one millimeter. Do this again, one millimeter. And then I want to dimension the distance between these two uh, circles right away. Do this again. Make sure this distance is set. One circle, two circles. There we go. And I come over to my drawing. The distance between these two center marks is going to be uh, 1.25. 1.25 so <clears throat> pulls these two together. And now I want to go ahead and start finishing up uh, the size of these circles. And actually, these aren't right. So look at this. This is saying R uh, 0.25. So the radius of this is not uh, right now that this, the diameter is 1. So it means the radius is 0.5. I've got to change this. This actually should be 0.5 for diameter. Do the same thing over here, 0.5 for diameter. And then the radius is 0.25, because that's half the diameter. So that's the right size. So given that that is now the right size, I'm going to grab a line. And I just want to sketch a line in across the top of here. Um, not really worried about the uh, connectiveness of this line, because I want to make sure I can push it to be tangent myself. So if I do this, I'm going to then come up here to my constraint tools. And I want to then select tangent. And I want to tell it, this line, you're going to be tangent to this object. And this line, you're going to be tangent to this object. And I'm also noticing these objects are actually on the construction line. Don't want that. I want these to become standard lines. Easy to fix. Just go ahead and select those. Click on the, the swap tool here, and they'll swap themselves out. All right, now I'm ready to trim. So I'm going to then find my trim tool. And I'm working in this tiny screen, it is tough sometimes to remember where all these little items are jumping around to. So where is that trim tool? There are coincidence. There's my trim tool. So grab my trim tool. I want to then trim this little line off of here. I want to trim this little line, this little line. Same with these insides, because now i got to have a slot. Here I'm going to zoom in nice and close so I can make sure I'm grabbing what I need to grab. All right, so I have a slot all set and ready to go. So, <clears throat> well, I'm not ready to finish that sketch. This thing's not positioned to the edge. So next thing, I'm going to jump back into that sketch, edit the sketch again. Now I'm going to grab my dimension tool and go from the center out to this edge, pull this down, look at my drawing, and it's saying that from the center of this side of the slot, 
over to the edge. Oh, there it is, 2.12. 2.12, <clears throat> hit enter, pulls the whole thing across. So that's great. Now, ready to extrude, fill it, and use the uh, array tool. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll grab the extrude tool, select that object, hit remove so it goes in the other direction, five millimeters, green check. Now we're ready to do the same thing with the fillet. Uh, give me one for the radius, select the edge, and it works itself all the way around there right away. So that's all set and good. So we have the fillet. Now we are set and ready. We can go ahead and um, <clears throat> uh, start creating this array across this part. So we'll grab the array tool, or the I should really call it the right turn, uh, linear pattern tool. Again, patterns, we want a feature pattern. And then I want to be able to select this uh, inside slot feature. And then I want to select the fillets that are running around the outside edge. So I have those fillets set up, I have the slot feature. So the distance that we're gonna run in between each one of these objects, we're gonna have to set that. We're also gonna have to set how many we need. So to know how many we're gonna need, I'm gonna come over here and just count the drawing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this number becomes 14. Now, we got to talk about the distance. Well, I got to look at this detail drawing and an array is going to go from one side of the feature to the exact other side of the other feature. So here we're looking at uh, 3.25 being the distance from one side of the feature to the other side here. But then we got to know how big the feature is. Well, that's 1.25 also. So here we have 3.25 and 1.25. Got to add these together. Uh, to get the distance from one side of the feature to the other side of the feature on the same um, plane there. So it takes into account the, the size of the feature plus the distance between. So that's uh, four and a half. So then this becomes 4.5. Now we just got to tell it. Um, so there's 4.5, 14. Yep. And the, di the distance or the, the uh, direction uh, selected here is uh, this edge. So we're set, we're good with the extrusion. I'll hit the green check and I can see that I have my fillet taken care of. This uh, pretty much I believe takes care of uh, the graham cracker and uh, this would be our first object uh, finished up. Now we'll continue to start working on the rest of our parts down here but I believe we'll uh, jump that into uh, a second part video here.